welcome AS stats students. We are having a look at the mm, June, I think, yeah, June 5-3 stats 1 paper for 2023. I think this is the one that I gave you as a prelim, uh, so it'll be good to go over it. Okay, so the first one, we've got some um, fair coins, and they're thrown repeatedly at the same time until... Mm, a pair of heads, pair of heads is obtained. The number of throws is denoted by the random variable. Like, okay, okay. As soon as you see this here, you should be thinking geometric. Hopefully, that was what you were thinking. And remember, the e x for geometric is equal to one over p. Uh, and in this case, uh, a pair of heads. Well, that's half times a half, isn't it? Because um, one head is a half chance, and two heads is half times half. So uh, this should be one over one over four, or one divided by uh, a fourth, which is equal to four. There we go, nice easy one to start the paper. Uh, find the probability that exactly five throws are required. Okay, so if there's five throws, that means four fails, uh, and then success. Okay, so that means uh, three quarters, um, and that's to the power of four, so failed three times, and then we get our success uh, uh, on the fifth to uh, fifth try. Okay, now uh, what does that turn out to be um, in the calculator? To three significant figures, that 0 0.0791. The next one. Uh, fewer than seven throws, okay? So seven throws would be six fails. So fewer than seven throws would be one, take away the chance of uh, six fails. All right, so seven throws to six fails. So then fewer than that would be one. All of the probabilities take away the probabilities of more than uh, uh, seven or more throws. Okay, uh, so that gives us uh, zero point eight two two. All right, doing good. Um, Anil is candidate in an election. He received forty percent of the votes. Uh, random sample. So forty percent of the votes. Random sample. One hundred twenty voters. Oh, approximation. Um, probability that uh, of the between 36 and 54 voted for Anil. Okay, so a couple of things here. This here is telling me um, uh, normal approximation. Ooh, I don't know what's happened there. Normal approx um, of binomial. So what I'll probably do to start this off is I'll write as a binomial. Um, and we've got 120... Um, uh, trials and the chance of success is 0 0.4 or 40 percent. Now I'm going to now move that into a normal distribution. 120 times 0.4 is 48, so 48 is our mean, right? That's our mean. Uh, and then, uh, then I'm going to times 48 by 0 0.6, um, which is Q, right? P and Q add to one. Um, so that gives me 28.8, and that's my uh, variance. Okay, now I'm going to do my continuity correction. When I put this into Y, uh, this 36 with my continuity correction becomes 35.5, uh, because 36, when we're moving from a uh, discrete set, uh, data set, which is binomial to uh, continuous, we make 36 between 35.5 and 36.5. So if we want to include the 36, then we must start with the 35.5. And again here, 54 goes in, a, in the continuous uh, data set for normal, goes between 53.5 and 54.5, and we want that included, so we're going all the way up to 54.5. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my two Z values. So Z1 is going to be, we'll take that 35.5, and 
we'll subtract the mean, which we found to be 48. Uh, then we'll divide it by the standard deviation, which is the square root of that 28.8 we got. And that gives me um, negative 2.329 to three decimal places. My Z2 uh, is going to be equal to um, the 54.5. Take away the mean, which is 48, once again over the square root of 28. Point eight, whoops, uh, and I'm getting 1.211 for this. So now we can rewrite this uh, in terms of standard normal distribution. So negative 2.329 is less than z is less than 1.211. All right, so now I'm kind of needing standard normal um so let's have a look if I've got a copy of that here. Ah, there it is. That's what we want. We'll just grab this whole thing. One, two, copy it across. All right. So going back here, um, what are we looking at? Negative 2.329. Negative 2.329, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to look up 2.329. 2.3 is here. 2 is here. And then I'm going to add 9. So that is, means add 2. So 9, uh, I'm adding 2 to this end digit here. So it becomes 10, which causes that to become 10, which causes this to become 9. So 0 0.99, I think. Um, so we're going... I'll write this in fine language. You know what? I'll draw it. No, that's not working for some reason. Okay. Here we go. Is our dodgy drawing of normal distribution. We know that uh, 1.21 is, so say, around here. And then negative negative 2.329 is all the way out here, and we want all of this between those two values. So we're going to go phi 1.211, which is everything under the 1.211. Take away phi, negative 2.329. And we can rewrite that as phi 1.211 minus 1 minus phi 2.329. Okay. Um, so let's get those values. Okay. And what was the other one? 1.211. So 1.2, 1 1.2 is here. 1.21, and then one more would be a 2 here. So 88, uh, 88, 1.2. One, I think eight, eight seven. One eight eight seven one. So we got zero point eight eight seven one. Take away one minus zero point nine nine. Oh, and chucking that into the calculator is going to give me zero point. Eight seven seven two three significant figures. So that's nice. Got that sorted. We'll do some more normal distribution stuff later on, I think, because that's our binomial approximation. Okay, moving on. Random variable x takes the values one, two, three, four. It's given that p x. Okay. So this is the probability where k and a are constants, and we know that p x equals 4 is equal to 3 times the probability that x equals 2. Okay, so probably what I'm just going to do is I'm going to write out my table. So I've got my possible values. Okay, and then the probability that x equals particular value. So we're going to use this here. So if um, x is 1, we'd get k into 1 plus a. So this is k into 1 plus a. And then if x is 2, so that's 2k into 2 plus a. And then the next one would be 3k into 3 plus a. And finally, this will be 4k into 4 plus a. 
and um, we know that the probability of this one is three times this one. So uh, four is four k into four plus a, and this is somehow three lots of this this one here. So three times three k into three plus a. So I'm going to expand this out. So I get sixteen k plus four k a equals nine k. Mm, three, three, uh, 27 K plus 9 K A. I think that's right. Um, okay, oh, wait a second. Here's, I've done this wrong. I've looked at the wrong one on the side. I need to be looking at this one here. Okay, it's uh, X equals 2, not X equals 3. So it should be um, 3 lots of... 2k into 2 plus a. Wake up, pay attention. Okay, so we can 6, that's 12k when we expand that up, plus 6k a. Now I'm seeing here that we've got a common factor of k. So let's divide out the k. This will give us 16 plus 4a equals 12 plus 6a. And so we get 2a on this side equals 4, so a equals 2. And now to find out what um, uh, k equals, we can rewrite these values here. So this would be, now we know what a is, this is 3k, isn't it? And this one, 2 plus 2, 4 in the bracket, so 8k. And then this one will be uh, 3 plus 2, 5, 5 times 3 is 15k. And this would be 4 plus 2 is 6, 6 times 4 is 24, so 24k. And we know that all of those probabilities have to add to 1. So 3k plus 8k, and that's because those are the only possibilities uh, that there are for this random variable. So they must all add up to 1. Uh, and now I'm getting 24, 34, 39, uh, 42, 50, 50. Okay, so k... There's 50 k's, so k is equal to 1 50th. And that's us. Um, now, okay, we've got to draw up a probability distribution, so I'm just going to grab what I've done here, copy it, and write it down here and fix it up. Oh. Right. It said to give the probabilities as fractions. Now we know what k is. Um, it's 50ths, isn't it? So 3 50ths, 8 50ths, and 24 50ths. So 3 50ths, 8 50ths, 15 50ths, and 24 50ths. And so we can delete all of this stuff here. Oops. All right, that's not working for some reason. All right, here we go. And now we're going to do varix. Okay, so varix, um, we will square those values and multiply them by the probability. So 1 squared times 3 over 50 plus 2 squared times 8 over 50 plus 3 squared times... 15 over 50 plus 4 squared times 24 over 50. Take away EX squared, and they've helpfully given that to us, so we didn't have to work that out. Now, when I chuck this on my calculator before, I was getting 21 over 25. That's my answer. Right, next one. Now, this is one that we really shouldn't lose marks on, but definitely in the test uh, there are a number of you who did, which is a bit of a, sh a shame. Very easy question. So, median, first of all, we know that there are 19 cyclists, and we are looking for median interquartile range uh, of the cheetah's times. Okay, so median, if there's 19, half a 19. Mm. So, we are looking for the 10th um, value, right? 19 divided by 2 is... 9.5, so you round up, so you're looking for your 10th value. So count up from the bottom, 1, 2, 3, 
4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So this is our median. Median equals, and it's 99 minutes. Then, what I do for the um, lower quartile, um, I know that, that now I've got 9 underneath that, so I'm looking for my fifth value, because halfway between is the fifth value. Because uh, 9 divided by 2 is 4.5, so we're looking for fifth. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, lower quartile. And then I go um, either 5 up from the median or 5 down from the top. 1, 2, whoops, 1, 2, 3, 4, and uh, this one here. So IQR equals 106, take away 83 equals 23 minutes. Easy, 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 easy. Uh, and then we've got two comparisons that we've got to make between the times of the cheetahs and the panthers. Okay, so the cheetahs, um, look at their medians. The cheetahs, uh, what's the median time? 99. Okay, cheetahs are faster, oh, ha have faster times than the panthers. Uh, but their times are also more spread out, 23 IQR versus 14. Their times are more varied, uh, slash spread out. Okay, lovely, lovely. Okay, another cyclist, Kenny, good old Kenny, from the Cheetahs, also took part in the race, the mean time taken uh, for the 20 cyclists. Of, uh, from the cheetahs was 99 minutes, okay, right. So what we're looking at here, maybe we'll just take a snip of this so you can see. We'll snip this here, okay. Oh, no, we do not want that, go away. Um, all right, let's toss this down here. Um, oops. So, Kenny's been added to this list, so now there's 20 of them. Um, so the 20, uh, 20 cyclists have this mean here. So if we go 20 times 99, um, we get 1980. And this is um, total times time for the 20 um, cyclists. Okay, and then we can find the total time of these guys here. Um, um, and I forgot to put 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 here. And so we're going to add up these. So, so 78, 79, 80, 82, 83, 87, 88, 97, 98, 99, 101, 103, etc. We add it all up. Uh, and when I added that up, I got, um, what did I get? I didn't actually write it down. Oh, let me just quickly calculate it. Uh, 1,862. So total time for 19 runners is 1862. Therefore, Kenny's time is going to be uh, 1980, subtract 1862, which gives us 118 minutes. All right, uh, next one, Jasmine. Good old Jasmine's, what's she doing here? Uh, fair six-sided dice, and we've got events A and B. Uh, yes, A, uh, sum less than six, and B, difference at most two. All right, and we've got to decide whether or not they're independent. Okay. 
So um, there's a number of different ways of doing this. I think with A, um, what could we do with A? I think for A, I'll just write out all of the different ways that we could fulfill this. So we've got one, 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 two, two, one, one, three, three, one, one, four, four, one, uh, two, three, three, two, um, two, two, I think that's it, because, yeah, any more we're going to go above uh, six, aren't we? How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so probability of A equals ten thirty-sixths. Okay, now let's look at B. Mm, how am I going to do B? I'm just going to draw a sample space diagram for B. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'm just going to tick the places where the difference is at most two. So one and one, that's fine. Um, two and one, three and one. And then four and one we can't do. Okay. Two and one, yes. Two and two, yes. Two and three, yes. And two and four works as well. Uh, three and one, yes. Three and two, yes. Three and three, yes. Three and four, yes. Three and five, yes. But four and one, no, because that's three. Four and two is two, yes. Four and three, yes. Four and four, yes. Four and five, yes. Four and six. Five and one doesn't work. Five and two doesn't work. Five and three does. And then all the way down. Six uh, doesn't work until you get to four. Okay, so looking at this, just counting how many ticks, this should be how many ticks out of 36. So 3, uh, 7, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. That's out of uh, 24 out of 36. So probability of B equals 24 over 36. Now, what we say is if independent, our rule is uh, the probability of A intersection B is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. Now, what's probability of A intersection B? This is where we have both A and B being true at the same time. So that one is an, um, a 1, 1, 1, 2, that one, 2, 1, that one, uh, and then 2, 2, we've got at the end. Yep, yeah, we've got that one. Uh, what else have we got here? 1, 3. Um, 3, 1. We've got 2, 3. We've got 3, 2. I think that's it. So, this one is therefore... 8.36, I think. Now, let's check that out. 8.36. Does... Uh, mm, let's have a look. I'll, I'll put a equals for now, and let's see. 10 over 36 times... Uh, what's the other one? 24 over 36. And um, that equals 5 over 27. Okay, so you can see they are actually not equal, therefore not independent. Okay. The next one, what's the probability of B uh, given, that, uh, given A complement? So this is equal to the probability of B intersection A complement over the probability of A complement. Okay, now... The probability of A complements easy because it's just not A. Everything that's not A, so that's um, 1 minus 1036. So looking back up here, so you want 26 over 36 for that one. Now, where is it both B uh, and not A? Um, so all of these ones, isn't it? 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, right? 16, 
thirty sixths. Now that gives us sixteen over thirty six, which gives us eight. Uh, not not thirty six. Uh, my apologies, twenty six, which gives us eight over thirteen. All right, number six. Uh, here we go. Standard deviation. All right. The mass of grapes sold by a large shop can be modeled by normal distribution. So they tell us that mean uh, is 28, 10% uh, uh, of days less than 16 are sold, kgs, and we want to find standard deviation. Okay, so what they're saying here, here's our normal distribution, here's our mean, 10% are less than such and such a point. So here is the 10%. So we're looking for a negative Z value. But what we can do is we can find the Z value for 90%, right? Um, and then make that a negative value. So let's go to our, our um, chart here. And actually, helpfully, this is one of the critical values, isn't it? So the 90% value is 1.282. So therefore, we know that Z equals um, negative 1.282. All right, this is, that's there. So we can use our uh, formula equals uh, 16, take away our mean, mean being 28, over our standard deviation, and then we just solve for standard deviation. Um, so that standard deviation will equal 16 take away 28 over negative 1.282 and uh, I'm getting 9.36 for this two three significant figures okay uh, the mass of grapes sold on any day is independent uh, of the mass sold on the other day, 12 days are chosen at random. Probability, find the probability less than 16 kgs of grapes are sold on more than two of these 12 days. Okay, so this is clearly binomial. Um, so binomial distribution, we've got 12 trials and the probability of success is 10% from our first question, 0 0.1. Um, because that's the chance of selling less than 16 kgs of grapes, okay? Um, so, uh, on more than two of these days. So we could find the probability um, of 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, but I'm lazy. I'm going to find, I'm going to go 1 minus the probability of 0, 1, and 2, right? So, one, take away, then we use binomial. So 12 choose 0 times 0. Point, whoops, 0. 0.1 to the 0 times 0. 0.9 to the 12. So that's when we get uh, no times do we sell less than 16 kgs. Uh, then 12 choose 1, so one day where we sell six, uh, less than 16. And then the other 11 days uh, we will sell more than that. And then finally 12, choose 2, times 0 0.2 to the 2. So two days we uh, sell under the 16. And then 0 0.9, all the other days we're selling above the 16. Now this is giving me, when I plot that into the calculator, 0 0.111. Easy peasy. Okay, nextly, um, in a random sample of 365 days, how many days would you expect the mass of grapes sold to be within within 1.3 standard deviations? Okay, so we're thinking of our standard normal distribution. Here it is. This is the mean. And we want to go out to negative uh, 1.3z value and positive 1.3z value. And that would be within 1.3 standard deviations of the mean. So we're looking at the probability that negative 1.3 is less than z is less than 
1.3. So, we go to our table. Okay, 1.3. We need uh, 1.3. Where's 1.3? 0 0.9032. 0 0.9032. Okay, I'm just going to 0. 9032 over here. I'm going to use that. Okay, so this is equal to phi 1.3, which is everything under 1.3. Take away phi negative 1.3, which is equal to phi 1.3. Take away 1 minus phi 1.3, which is equal to now phi 1.3. We looked it up just a minute ago. 9032. 0.9032. Take away 1 minus 0.9032. Chuck it in to our calculator and get 0 0.8064. Now, that's a probability that one day would be uh, within 1.3 standard deviations. So we just now go 0 0.8064 multiplied by the 365 days that we have. Uh, what does this give us? 0 0.8064 times 365. And we're dealing with 294.336. So 294 or 295 days. Okie dokie. Now we're into our last question. Find the number of different arrangements of the 10 letters of Casablanca in which the two C's are not together. Okay, so the total way total um, ways we can arrange um, no constraint with no constraints. So would be uh, there's 10 letters, so it's 10 factorial, and then we divide by now, notice we've got a C here, we've got two C's, and we've got 1, 2, 3, 4 A. so divide by 4 factorial times 2 factorial, and that would give us 75,600 ways. Um, total ways where the C's are together... Sorry if you can hear that in the background, that's my two-year-old having a tantrum. Okay, so um, if the C's are together, we can count them as like one letter. So now we're dealing with uh, nine things that we're uh, moving around, right? Because the C's are treated as one. And then we've got the four A's to deal with, um, which are going to be repeats when we move them around. So 15,120. And therefore we can find the number of ways uh, in which the two C's are not together will be uh, the 75,600 take away the 15,120 which gives me a grand total of 60,480. Okay. Um, okay, now the different arrangements of the 10 letters in the word Casablanca which have an A at the beginning, an A at the end, and exactly three letters between the two C's. Oh, this is not very nice. Okay, so what we're going to do here, what we're going to do here is put an A at the beginning, and then we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then we've got an A at the end. However, in addition to this, there's a number of ways that we can do the C. So we could start... We could have a C at the beginning and then go 1, 2, 3, C, and then we'd have three C's, uh, uh, three letters after that, right? So that, that's one way of filling in those gaps. Uh, let me just check, yeah, 4 and 8, yep, yeah, perfect. But then we could have it like this, we could have uh, C, 1, 2, gap, C, 1, uh, gap, gap, or we could have gap, gap, C, gap, 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 C, gap, or we could have Gap, 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 C, gap, 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 C. So you can see that there's four ways. Okay, four ways that we could put those C's in. And then, what about the other letters? Okay, so how many other letters have we got? One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, six other letters. So... The A's are determined, they're already stuck there. We've got four ways of putting the C's, and they're repeats, so we don't need to, um, you know, do anything else with that. So four ways of putting the C's, and then ar arranging around those C's, we've got six letters, so six factorial ways of 
arranging them. But then there's the fact that we actually have two more A's left over, don't we? Because we've used two at the ends. So those there's going to be two factorial ways that we're going to have to divide by um, because there'll be duplicates. Now this, when we multiply it all together, gives us 1,440. Okay. I think we're just about done. Oh, this is the last question. Okay, last question. Uh, five letters are selected from the ten letters. Okay, selected. Okay, so choosing. Find the number of selections in which the five letters include at least two A's and at most one C. Okay, at least two A's. All right, so we could go A, A, and then something, something, something. And then we could do three A's, A, 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 something, something. And we could even get four A's, A, 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 and then something. Now, let's consider this first case here. Um, with the word Casablanca, we only want at most one C. So let's ignore that one. Let's not think about the A's because I've already looked at the different ways that we could have the A's. So we've got S, B, L, N, C. So for those three options there, we've got five options to choose from. I'm going five, choose three, uh, which is 10. Now in the second case, where we've got the three A's chosen, we've also got um, five options to choose from, again, these five, and we're choosing two of them, which is also 10. And then finally, uh, five, choose one for the final one, which is five. And so there are 25 ways that we can do this. I think that's it. Well, I hope that's been helpful. That was your exam. Hopefully we can um, catch up in the next week uh, and go over a couple more of these stats papers. Um, if you do have any questions about this particular one or anything wasn't clear, because I was rushing through it, um, do let me know, um, either through ThinkWave or the comments.